to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coast and the Star Ledger on January 6, 2016, and posted on a bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. Items for review, city managers report on issues raised at prior council meetings. I have none at this time. Special events, Leisha. Good evening, Mayor and Council. First application before you tonight is actually from the city for the Easter pageant and parade, which will be held on March 27th, and we're requesting to use a city date for the Paramount Theater as well as the boardwalk. Next is the Chamber of Commerce's fifth annual Asbury Park restaurant tour, which will be held on May 1st in the downtown area, primarily in the boardwalk. Next is the Punk Rock Bowling and Music Festival at the Stone Pony Summer Stage. And the request is, this will be held on um, June 11th and 12th. And the request is to close First Avenue between Ocean and Kingsley. And uh, the Stone Pony will be paying for parking, the parking spaces with, with, with the street closure. The Asbury Park Springwood Summer Music Series, tentatively, the dates would be um, beginning in the last Monday in June and run through um, the last Monday in August. And this will be held in Springwood Park. Um, I say tentatively because uh, the dates have to be confirmed. Sure. Sure. Are they asking to close the street for three days? Uh, no, the streets would just be closed Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday? Yes. In the Asbury Park or Springwood Summer Music Series. Mm -hmm. Could you explain a little bit about that, please? Um, the, the Musical Heritage Society received a grant to do um, a music series um, in the park. And they received, I forget the dollar amount, but they did receive the grant. So they're going to be putting on shows? Mu yes, music, music shows, shows, various types of music. All right. Yes. Is, it open, is it open up to anyone else? Anybody in the, uh, in the city or so? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Do they know this though? To attend. To attend. To attend, yes. Not to park. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And just as a point of clarification on this application, it's requesting that the city co sponsor the event. And what that means the city will provide is the park is clean. If they need trash cans, we'll provide that type of thing as we would do for any event. But if police are needed, they would have to pay for that as anybody else would. Is a twenty-five thousand dollar grant which we require them to match it with twenty-five thousand, be it cash or in-kind services. So one of the in-kind services is since the city's co-sponsored, we could waive the rental fee, stuff like that, and the cleanup fee, but we could not waive the police. But it's something that's very, very good and something that will work out and something I'm very happy and looking forward to. And we all voted yes to get it, and it, it was nationally done, and it was 15 finally accepted, and uh, I think Asbury Park ranked either number 12 or 13 out of 15 wow. countrywide. So uh, we have Tom Gilmore and everybody who's, who was responsible for getting this on should be proud of themselves and cannot wait for it to happen. Next is the Sandy Paws event, which is sponsored by Clean Ocean Action. And this would be held on September 24th. And this is a beach uh, dog walk fundraiser and a beach cleanup. They did this event last year as well. And where do they walk the dogs? On the boardwalk. Okay. And they do clean up, of course. <laughs> and lastly, we have two wedding applications. One for September 10th on 7th Avenue Beach and the other for September 17th on 6th Avenue Beach. 
Okay, any questions? Thank if you. I can just give a brief update on the sign, just to let uh -oh. the council know where we are with that. <laughs> um, it was asked previously if the issue we're having now was the same issue we had before years ago, and yes, it was. So my question to the sign company was, how do we prevent this from happening again? Um, in simple terms, it has something to do with the IP address, static versus dynamic. So the suggestion from the sign company, Dactronics, as well as Verizon, is that we get a wireless modem. So that's what I did. That had to be ordered. It's, it is being shipped from South Dakota from the sign company. I should have it tomorrow. Next, a tech has to be assigned to install the wireless modem and uninstall the modem that's there now. Hopefully, this will be completed by early next week. So that's where we are now. I got an email from the sign company today stating that they hope to have someone here by Monday or Tuesday of next week to actually install the modem, and then the sign would be up, barring any other issues. Thank you. Okay, so that's where we are. Compared to past years, that's good news. <laughs> now on to review of the agenda items for uh, Wednesday night's meeting. I have a few. Yeah, I actually didn't have any questions. Oh, I just no, I'll, I'll, that'll be one of my agenda. Okay. Yeah, I didn't actually have any questions. I just wanted to compliment Cindy and Michael and whoever else. There was things there that were like, had not been followed up in the past that were followed up on. And I appreciate that, like the snow and ice removal ordinance, which code was new about for a while and nothing ever happened. So this is like good follow through after the storm. There was something that was a problem. There's an ordinance on now in front of us that's addressing that same thing with the towing services. And then a couple others that I thought were, were good ones to be moving forward was the body camera grant for the police and the bike and pedestrian planning assistance program. Those I thought were all good ones that were moving forward. So um, just to thank you for moving those things forward and not letting them fall through the cracks. And just to elaborate that on that, um, regarding the snowstorm, what we had was a tremendous amount of people digging out and then throwing all the snow into the street. So then streets then didn't look plowed because everybody was taking it. So what this ordinance did is, is put something in place to prevent that, which we didn't have before. And to an even more extreme extent, uh, management companies taking their snow from their parking lots right. and dumping it in the public streets where it had been plowed for cars to park. So that's been a complaint for since I've been here and now it's gonna be slowly addressed, so. And the other ordinance looked like it possibly addressed the towing issues that we also had during the snowstorm. So the other issue for those of you that weren't here at that meeting, the other issue during the blizzard was cars were left abandoned in the middle of the streets and the towing companies that we contract with uh, stopped answering our calls. So there was no ability to tow the cars, um, which was something we asked to be followed up on. And from what I can tell, um, it was. I have some questions about the packet though. I don't have to go first. I have questions about the packet also. So Joe, you I'm good, I'm done. Move on. Um, this is, I just have a real easy question on resolution 15 yeah. Um, and I didn't read the new ones that were out, so this might be fixed. Um, so uh, one was you, Fred. It was so. If there's another ordinance about the um, food truck hours, it might have been fixed in that one. I couldn't tell you if it was for sure. Did you redo that ordinance? We, we revised um, to make it clear that the. Um, <coughs> Okay, that was my, that was it. hours, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. would be applicable on Fridays and Saturdays. So that was my question. So eliminate that one. And then the towing ordinance, Michael, there's nothing punitive in it. And I don't know that, that this is the area that you put something punitive in it, but there's nothing punitive if they don't respond again. Like I, 
I think it addresses the situation, but if they decide to do what they did during the last blizzard, <coughs> we, have, we, we have no ability to, to do something about it. That would be in the contracts with the tower. Okay. Um, currently, since we're under the bid threshold, it's more ad hoc that if we don't have that um, repercussions. We've talked internally about how to make it a little bit better, and now since the ordinance allows for just outside of the city, for five miles of any tower, um, we'll have to come up with a standard contract and move forward from there that if they don't respond, something does happen to them. Okay. Well, well, then since we're on that, can we stay there a second? Yep. So that's 2016-05, right? So it says, so we know what we went through. We had two towing companies on call, and they could not handle it. But this does not say we're increasing, we're going out to bid for more towing companies. So if they could park them within one mile or five miles, how does this help us? One of the, we had two issues with, with, the, with the storm. Was one, that the principal tower, the lot was full, and that's how they didn't tell us anymore. Um, so then when we went to the secondary tower, they did have some space, and that was the delay um, until he filled up. So it, this actually came to a, to a combination of two things. One, we ran out of space for cars that we, cars that we towed. And two, there is no mechanism in place for responsibility of the tower to come out. So now we're expanding the services. And in regards to the bid threshold, we're actually under the threshold. So we don't go out, have to go out to bid. I want to go out to bid just so we can have standards that they have a yard like this, that the towers um, had, don't have criminal records. There is a standard that we can impose. That will come later, probably the next couple months, as we put the standards together to present to you. But right now, this actually will open it up so that there's more people that we can call because we're under the bid threshold. Well, yeah, and that was our biggest problem. I mean, okay, one guy's yard filled up, the other guy didn't respond whatsoever. So if you have two towers and if the one guy doesn't have a yard outside of the five mile radius or inside of the five mile radius, we're still stuck where we are. So we have to go back out to bid as my perception. As a backup also. Right. No, we should just to solicit people, but there's also, remember, under the state law with, if there's a declaration of their emergency like there is, we can supersede that and send it somewhere else. Okay, just so those, those a aspects need to be put into any tow or contract that says if you don't respond, we can do these things as per state of emergency. That's why it's going to take us a little bit of time to make sure we get it right. So, the so, so we're not going to wait eight months to go back out to bid? No. We've never gone out to bid before. Yes we, yes, we did. We did last year. You weren't here. We did. I was told we didn't. Well, somebody lied to you. Uh, we did. We, we put out RFPs. We had two people submit proposals, and they both had to have yards in, Within the, city. in, in the city. And we got them. Okay. Who picked the number five miles? I mean, it, I, I don't care, but I mean, just out of curiosity, I mean. The police well, department. Was there any rationale? Quite honestly, that's where I've seen it as standard, so I didn't question it. I've seen it five miles from every place I've worked. Okay. Be it new to us, is this a question? Now, if it doesn't work, we change it, we make it larger. If you can make it larger now to 10 if you want, and just to provide more cover, but I've seen five repeatedly. And do you want to just I read it, but do you want to just briefly talk about the body-worn camera resolution for the grant? Yes. Uh, about a month ago, I believe it was, we received a grant um, to help offset the cost of the cameras. The cost per camera is approximately $1,200. We've received a grant for five or $550 per camera. So our costs have been reduced by 40%. Um, this authorizes the signing of the grant. They are still looking at some of the technical details um, of who the prosecutor wants. So once we purchase the cameras, you'll get another resolution. It's off of state contract. There's multiple vendors, but we want to be able to talk between us and you know the prosecutor's office in case we have to give this the the, the video file up. So the police department I know is looking at the technical side of things, and we should have something in the next month or two. I would anticipate. And then me, Michelle, do you want to um, just talk a little bit about the DOT bicycle plan? Good evening. 
You have as a consent resolution a authorization for me to finally make the application to NJDOT f uh, for a for a bicycle pl uh, bikeway planning effort for bike lane effort under their pedestrian bicycle safety program. Um, I had originally wanted to apply for this in the fall, and when I had contacted DOT, they said we have such a demand from municipalities, we would like you to wait till February. So February, they sent me the application, and part of the application package is an authorizing resolution from the council saying that you would like to participate. The program is a 100% technical assistance program in that DOT provides us with the planning and engineering staff to meet with ourselves and the community to develop a bicycle plan. The council, the council will be involved, the public will be involved, and in the end, you know, the council <coughs> will vote for whether, the, you know, an acceptance of the plan. So it's a grant, that's a, it's a planning grant, and I, it's fine, the timing is dovetailing very well right now because we can incorporate it into the master plan. Does anyone have any specific questions about the grant application? No. Okay, thank you. Jeff, any other questions? Keep on. On that? On that particular one or, or anything on, on the agenda? Oh. No, I'm good. I went through everything. Okay. So, 2016-115. It's disposal of surplus equipment, and, and I saw the attachment after it. It looks like it's all computer equipment from the police department. It's no good. So it, 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 we, we, it's not even worth offering it to anybody. The next time we have an auction, can we get rid of the horse trailer, please? We have a horse trail. Like for real horses? Yeah, like for real horses. We had horses two years ago, two summers ago. Yeah, yeah so we forgot to put it on the last auction. So I, I was hoping we could add it to this, but since this is all being. All right, I'll add to I'll see what the plan is for the horse trail. It was well before either one of your time. Yes. Um, 2016 <coughs> So this is for T and M to do work at the sewer plant as far as the emergency generator. Right. Is this out of Sandy money? Yes. So this is ninety percent reimbursable? It yes, it should be. Include should be or will be? It from my understanding that this is. Um, we've been actually um, from the mayor at attended meeting reviewing the sewer plant where we're going to get additional money. So I'm not sure where this is going to fall at this time. Uh, we do have this estimated cost for the project. It's going to be about $550,000 for the public. This is to install a new generator at the sewer plant, which was damaged during Sandy. The generator itself is going to be 100% um, reimbursable, 90% reimbursable. The professional services, is my understanding, won't be, but I do want to double check that. It mentions a proposal dated February 8th, which I probably saw and probably threw away. Can I get another copy of that? Sure. Okay. Uh, 2016 that's it as far as agenda questions for myself. All right, we're on matters by city council. Anybody have matters? Um, yes, on Saturday, February 27th, there is going to be a expungement seminar at St. Stephen Church, and it's open to all Monmouth County residents. There will be attorneys present. It is a free service. Um, it will advise whether or not you are, you are um, it's possible to have your misdemeanors expunged 
and it will follow through. This is not just one time. There will be a series of these sessions, and it will be free. We, this is being sponsored by Asbury Park Can, and they will also pay any fees that are associated with it. So if you know of anyone that has questions or issues, on Saturday between the hours of 10 and 1, please let them know to be there. Um, that's number one. And number two, on Saturday, I had the opportunity to attend the first training session of the SALT School for the new hotel. And it was absolutely wonderful. These trainees are going to get training that they couldn't possibly pay for. The resources that the SALT is bringing in. And the other thing I wanted to say is there were 355 applications to be admitted for 150 seats. They expanded it to 163 because there were 13 people they just didn't want to turn away. And 80% of the training class is comprised of Asbury Park residents. So I think this is a wonderful thing, and I'm very, very happy to report that. So next. Uh, last Saturday, a lot of the council people attended the Valentine uh, luncheon for the senior citizens at Kuna Cafe. And I, I have to say it was beautiful, and I'd like to give uh, People that gave that, I was exactly, I'm not exactly sure who gave that. West Side Citizen. West Side Citizen, you did a beautiful job. And um, <coughs> I keep up the good work. Uh, one of the things. Oh, I appreciate them. Um, one, another thing I like the council to think about when we have someone to come up to speak, uh, they have the back turn to the audience. I think it would be a good idea to maybe hook up this podium so that you can look both ways and people can see. Something I'd like for you to think about, council, city manager. Other than that, that's it. Thank you. Uh, the only thing I want to say, I think, from the entire council is our heartfelt condolences to former council member John Lafredo, his sister Regina, who many of us knew for many years, passed away. Um, the end of last week, and um, we offer our condolences to him and his family. Let me just uh, segue on to Jesse. Uh, the February 13th Valentine's Day luncheon, there was many people. It was a great, I, I love the day. It's just such a great day. Uh, but so many people give their time, their resources, the food. So I'd like to read off the list if I forget anybody I apologize Asbury Park High School Culinary School Brando's Perkins the Beer Garden TJ's Luigi's Frank's DJ's Dino's Kimmery's and La Tapatia all donated food the volunteers were Barbara Van Wagner and her family Denise Brown Karen Murphy Sue Chapman Maurice Newsom all the young people from Asbury Park and Neptune who were outrageous and great and the West Side Citizens United members and their families. Uh, great event. We could probably pay off the city's debt if we would go viral with the dancing that Dave Parrot taped. And uh, everybody had a great time dancing. And I apologize. I have to go back, with your permission, to a question on the agenda that I forgot. OK, I'm not going to find it again. The, the, uh, this is, I want to correct it before Wednesday night, so I've read the 2016 dash 04 uh, removal of snow. Uh, if you, the one that I have, if you go down to 7 7 parking. The first page. The imposition and collection of any fine imposed by the provisions of this section shall not constitute any bar to the right to the city. I don't even know what the hell that means. This was one of the ones that were redone, though, I think. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. 
I'm not saying that that's taken care of in it. I'm just saying it's one of the ones that was redone. That we just got tonight. Yeah, because it was changed. But okay. So, Fred, it's three lines up? Yes, uh, okay. I see um, where the mayor is referring. Um, I we think are between now and Wednesday. Too. Yes, okay. I, I think that language is written the way it's supposed to be, but I'll double check okay. with uh, Deputy Chief Salerno. I know that uh, he and uh, Officer Fiore were reviewing ordinances from other municipalities and that they uh, took this language from one of the ordinances that they liked from one of the other municipalities and we'll make certain that this is written in the correct manner before you introduce okay, it on Wednesday. Fine, no problem. And then if I'm going back to the original handout in the package. So on the second page, C, no person, including the owner, tenant, or occupant of lands or premises, shall place, deposit, throw, shovel any snow or ice into a upon a street, roadway, alleyway, or lane of the city of Asbury Park, which has been plowed or cleared of snow. The last seven words scare me. How about if we haven't plowed a street? That means they can put it into the street. So why not take that out and just say you can't do it any time? Why would we say... If the street's been plowed, you can't put it out there. But if the street has been plowed, you have all rights to put it out there. I, I would recommend taking that out if it hasn't been already. Okay, understood. Okay. I'll also review that with the deputy chief. Okay, again, I apologize. That's all I have. Thank you. Any other matters by city council? Oh, uh, yes. I'd like to just comment on something. I uh, slipped my mind. When they're, slow, when they're plowing the streets, I noticed that a lot of uh, what you call handicaps signs are up, and the street comes, street cleaners are just going and repiling the snow back up there. And it's very difficult if you're handicapped or in a wheelchair to get to your car at times, but the, the sides have to pay three or four times to come for uh, a snow someone that shoveled the snow to come by and remove the snow. I have quite a few complaints about that. Is there any way that we can avoid that? I mean, if we let the DPW know, maybe oh, we can yeah. go around if you see a sign or so. We can ask if this can depend on the quantity of snow. But yeah, we'll, we'll try to make sure that all the spots are as good as that's possible. But what I'm saying is this. Um, they'll come by and they'll remove the snow. Yeah, push it up there. Say the, say I shovel my snow out, okay? Then the truck will come and just push it back up there. Uh, and I'm really looking out for the people with handicaps. I'm saying I have seen them come, and some guys I have noticed go around, but some guys just push it right back up. And it's really tough on a lot of handicapped people. Okay. I know it's difficult. It's might be, but if we can work that out, I appreciate it. Let, just let them know. All right, I'll talk to, to the superintendent. I Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Any other matters? Matters by the city manager. Matters by the city attorney. I have nothing at this time. Any questions I had about items on the agenda, I went over earlier today with uh, Michael and with Cindy. Okay, so. hey, at this time, can I have a motion to open the meeting up to the public? Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. The public is expected to conduct themselves in a proper manner. Any derogatory, abusive, or threatening statements will not be permitted. The chair will immediately rule such conduct out of order and after appropriate warning may terminate any further comments from the speaker. Each speaker has three minutes to speak. And when you please come up to the mic, state your name and address for the record. You're on. Uh, thank you. Robert Wiener, 601 Madison Avenue. Uh, a couple of comments and questions on parking. Uh, first of all, is there any reason why we can't have a large formal sign over at the police station that says parking applications here along with the hours? Um, I was at the Business Development Center last week and watched, I was there an hour and four people came in and said, where is the parking? Where do I sign up? So I don't understand why there isn't a nice, clear, professional sign uh, on that building. There's enough confusion with people walking around not knowing where to go. So that's one question. <clears throat> the second part, part is personal, and this is the Bangs Avenue garage. Uh, I've attended parking meetings since the first meeting, and I understand and appreciate all the difficulties that we have with parking. On February 1st, you raised my fee for parking in the Bangs Avenue garage 
from $480 a year to $900 a year. An increase of $420 a year to me personally uh, for one car. I've been parking there for many years because there was never any such thing as resident parking, although people told me we had resident parking. And once you took away that little street uh, on, uh, which street is it, on Emory, uh, and made it two hours, that, that made it impossible. So the reasoning behind the Bangs Avenue garage was to take cars off the street that people like Carter Sackman, uh, where there was parking available, and free up parking for the people. So as of last week, there were seven cars uh, that applied for applications for the Bangs Avenue garage. I know two of them happen to be moving from Carter Sackman's lot to a, a lot $25 a month cheaper and indoors. In fact, maybe all seven people were there. So I don't see any advantage to this. And the worst part for me is that my extra money is not going to Asbury Park. It's going to the, to the state of New Jersey. So I can't see what, what, what I'm paying extra for, what benefit I'm getting, and what the future is for the Bangs Avenue Garage. And one other thing, this past Friday and Saturday, there wasn't a parking spot available on Bangs or Emory or Cookman, and the Bangs Avenue Garage was empty because it's closed. And there wasn't even a sign that said closed. Uh, actually, there was. Somebody wrote in crayon and put it on the place where you put your card in there. So I think we have a lot of things to change, and this is, these are my personal comments. Are you done? Because I'll respond. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, no, and we could talk more, but I don't know if it, well, I'll talk right now. Um, so it should not be closed, the Bangs Ave Garage on the weekends? It hasn't it be been open. Be hasn't been open. So it's a two-track path with the Bangs Ave Garage. We're opening it up to residents, and we can talk about that piece in a minute. But the spots that are not open to residents should be open for public parking on the weekends and we have certain spots that are only available after six o'clock and on the weekends. So the Bangs Avenue guys should never be closed. So whoever closed it, we should open it. It should never be closed. I agree. Right? Am I correct? Okay. So that's, that's a mistake. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. We'll hopefully we'll deal with that. Um, the two cars going, I'm going to go backwards of the list that I wrote. Sure. Um, the two cars coming from Carter's lot should also not be going necessarily right away to Carter's lot, to, to the Bangs Ave garage. The idea was that the people who were parking in those, that have parking through their landlord, should use their landlord first and not use the city's resources. Um, that, that's, that was the thinking. And to go back to the sign, that's easy, I think it makes sense to advertise what we're doing in that spot. But yeah, the thinking with the, there was a bunch of things. Um, we raised the rates to try to make it a mark to get to the market value, which was 100. Um, so 75 was a little bit below market value. We did a survey of all the off street parking spots in, in the city, and 75 was below market value. And the idea was to, and again, it's a work in progress, as you know, but the idea was to try to get people that would have traditionally taken spots on the street into the garage. And if that's not working, and that's what you're telling me, it's yeah, not working, it's not, no. then it has to be relooked at. And nobody's saying that it's, it's, you know, maybe the price is too high, or maybe maybe there's the, the price on the street is too cheap for those those permits. We have to look at it. And as you know, we're going out with an RFP for a parking professional whose job is full-time to deal with this, because the, you've been at the parking committee meetings. Many. There's a, a ton of details, and nobody in that room, um, except for Officer Dello, has a background in parking. And... Um, we're, we're gonna we're gonna hand it off, but in the meantime, we're gonna address those issues. So number one, we'll make sure the Bangs Ave garage is open, and number two, we will address if we've only got seven cars in there. What's the next step with the garage? Okay, thank yeah, you. Thank and you. the sign thing should be easy to address. Right? It should be done tomorrow. Well, are you put you want to sign on the building itself or on, just on, on the police station? They have glass doors. On the police and, station. And this is where the parking uh, where people file their applications. Except unless you know. People are walking around looking like this. Where is it? Uh, so why isn't there a sign? And especially the hours. Let people know what the hours are. Let them, this is where you find, sign. This is where you sign up. This is where the applications are. When you walk in, the applications are there. The people were very, very nice. I have no problem with that. But you have to make it a little easier for everybody. There's. I know there was a sign on it as of 
about three weeks ago. We'll double there wasn't check a sign, sign on it that I've ever seen, and I went over there today just to make sure I wasn't going to make a fool out of myself, and somebody's going to tell me, oh, that sign is there. So I went over we'll there right there. before I came here. The, the issue we're having with um, Carter is Carter doesn't allow people to prepay for the entire year, so they go mm -hmm. month by month. Mm -hmm. um, the parking staff just came to me again. We've been trying to figure that out is how do we verify that you did what you're supposed to do when you're not paying it in full? The councilman and I have had this discussion. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So what the, the latest thing is, is we're going to try to make sure that we get everyone's copy of their lease before we do this. And I've had a discussion with Carter that we do have to try to figure out a way to do this because Carter has said, I want to open my garage to everyone. And my response to that was, well, you're not having everyone who's supposed to be in there go in there anyway. That's true. So we're sort of stuck that Carter's month by month requirement, how do we verify that someone paid a month? It's difficult. So mm -hmm. we really don't know how to fix that just yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mike, excuse me. Mike, is there an emergency number that people can call if that just happened to happen again? Excuse me. Hi. Good evening, Council. John Grant, 1205 4th Avenue. What I'm going to discuss tonight, I do out of love and support for the city and our community, but this is a serious issue for me. I'd like to talk about the proposed transfer of city-owned land to the Westside Community Center. The land in question is not clear to me, but I understand it to be the half of the property with the gymnasium. I have to tell you just the suggestion of a transfer is a miserable failure of leadership by the city council. How would it be in the best interest of the kids in Asbury Park to transfer property to people or a person who have for decades willfully mismanaged an organization that was an anchor of the West Side community for decades? Decades. The leadership there has defied, defied every legal mandate that requires financial transparency, fundraising disclosure, a board member list, timely tax filings, detailed mission accomplishments, and more. Does anyone even know what the mission is? This is what I'm proposing. The West Side Community Center needs to undergo an exorcism and land in the hands of community stakeholders who will shepherd the center back to a thriving, <coughs> successful community asset. Here's some information for you. The center has not been filing the annual report required by the New Jersey Division of Revenue. Legally, the community center could be dissolved for failure to file those reports if it has not been already. The community center is not listed in the New Jersey Charitable Registration Directory since they are not in compliance with the submission of an accurate annual <laughs> financial and expense report. Do you know how the community center is going to reinstate its 501c3? I have the answer to that for you. They are not. IS Revenue Procedure 2014-11, you can look it up, details a laborious process. The cornerstone in establishing reasonable cause, um, signed under penalty of perjury for their failure to fire <coughs> the annual IRS Form 990 nonprofit tax return. The West Side Community Center has not filed that form since 2008. Without the legal 501c3 designation, charitable contributions made to the community center are not tax deductible on income tax returns, and the community center um, property is subject to property tax. I have three questions. Number one, does the city own the property where the gym is? Number two, who has title to the center's um, 115 DeWitt Avenue property? A deed from the county hall of records could not be provided and the clerk suggested the only way to find out is to do a title search. Do you have the deed and may we see it? One last thing, now that the city is tied at the hip with the community center, when are you going to discuss with state officials a way to proceed, such as dissolving the West Side Community Center Corporation restructuring the organization with a clean slate of leadership under state supervision, 
or merging with a similar nonprofit with a track record of success? Those are my questions. Thank you. Michael, you want to start? And if not, I will. I, mean, I can provide some context. Because we have active litigation in right now, so I don't know. How far we can go. I can say that I don't know who owns the title to 115. Um, that would be a title search, but I don't believe it's us. Um, talking to state officials about dissolving uh, another entity, I think, would establish a very dangerous precedent. I can tell you that myself, the mayor, and Councilman Kendall are meeting with the board on Wednesday to discuss some of the council's concerns. But since there is active litigation, we can't really get into too much at this time. Fred, would you like to add something to that? <clears throat> I would just add that the city has performed a, a title search through a, a title company, and uh, that is a public document. So if anyone is interested in getting a copy of that, you can fill out an OPA request, and it's a public document. OK. And the only thing I would add is, like Mike already said, it, uh, Wednesday morning, 9 o'clock, uh, we're meeting with the board of directors, and I would like maybe John's comments can be transposed by then, and we can read it right to them at the meeting because they probably won't hear that. And I think you brought some good concerns. You can have this. Okay, fine, and we'll we'll make that available to them. And again, we're meeting with them. And last meeting, we asked the city manager to set up a meeting as soon as possible with them and. Wednesday at 9 a.m. we're meeting with them. So. How many times have you met with them? <coughs> yeah. Okay. We're, we're trying to resolve it before litigation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. There, well, Thank just you. to be to clarify, there is litigation regarding the um, costly uh, litigation. Okay. Well, the the exempt status of the property. The city removed the exempt status and the Westside Community Center filed a tax appeal trying to regain its tax exempt status, and that matter is currently pending right now before the Monmouth County Board of Taxation. And it's scheduled for February 27th <coughs> in Freehold, if anybody wants to attend. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Reverend David J. Parriott, Jr., 149, Atkins Avenue, Asbury Park. Uh, just want to say, uh, concerning the name selection for the park, that it should be Springwood Avenue Park. It's an iconic name. It's an indelible name to many people, not only, again, in this area, this county, this state, all over the United States and even in some foreign countries. You can mention that name and people will ask you, when you say you're from Asbury Park, what about Springwood Avenue? And not only that, Springwood Avenue Park will give memory to so many people who have gone on. No need to name it after someone. When you say Springwood Avenue, you're talking about all of the, the professionals, musicians, the doctors, the attorneys, uh, and others who, uh, have done so much to bring Springwood Avenue to what it is in the name that it has. And I want to thank you for that. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Rita Morano, 8th Avenue. I agree with Reverend Pariat, too. It's the second time I'm telling you that. Um, <laughs> In, in 60 years? In 50 years. Okay. <laughs> uh, I had an experience this weekend. I went down to the beachfront and I parked, my daughter parked the car. And uh, there was one, two, I think there was three meters that weren't working. So we finally found one that did work. So we put the money in and it rejected it. So then my daughter used her credit card and it worked. And then all of a sudden, a ticket came out, and I said, I have a refund for $1. So I looked at it, and it says in very small print, you have to go down to the city yard to get your dollar. That is ridiculous in itself. I don't know what's going on with the meters, but I think something has to be done. I think you have to really give it to an outside agency. 
You are paying so much money. This is our business and we can make a lot of money. What are we doing with all these meters not working? There was one on Cookman Avenue too Saturday night that wasn't working. It, it's unbelievable that these things are going on. The sign doesn't work because somebody didn't pay the bill. We have an accountant, we have a, a purchasing agent, we have a treasurer, and we have a CFO. And nobody knew that we weren't paying the bill. That's impossible, especially for the accountant that's been here all these years. The guy that hides in the back, that sits way in the back of City Hall. I mean, how come nobody knows these things? And now, after paying $50,000 for the sign, we have to pay to have it repaired? That company should give it to us for nothing. Why do we have to pay? I think the sign was 55000 if I remember correctly. John would know. Right, John? I, I honestly don't know. Huh? I honestly don't know, but we can let you know. But I know it was over 50000 I mean, that's, and now we have to pay to have it repaired because somebody didn't pay the bill? Come on, this is not right. The meat is not working. Uh, there was a free <coughs> parking lot behind the Wonder Bar taking money away from us, taking money away from the people that, uh, you know, visit. They were all parking in the back of there. I mean, come on, this has got to be uh, handled a different way. I think you would do better if you had an outside person, company, handling those meters. They would know which ones were. How come they don't know which ones are out by the computer? I'm not computer savvy, so I don't know. I mean, shouldn't they know if a meet is out? Even if they don't know for $100,000 a year, they should Well, pick. that's what I'm saying. Well, you got to get rid of them, and you got to give it to an outside agency to do. I you agree, can. Rita. Read in our minds, Rita. I, I agree. Absolutely. Oh, when good. You're done. That, that Rita finished. That Rita finished. Good. I'm, I'm glad somebody agrees with me. But, I mean, it, it was really an experience to go to the meter. The first meter, the second meter, and then finally we got a meter at the end of the block, and it took our money. Then I got a dollar rebate. I don't even know why I got that rebate, but I'm going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm the only one that knows where the city yard is. I mean, because a, a person coming to town gets a refund, and then he go, they read it in tiny, tiny print. It says, go down to the city, uh, city yard and get your money. Come on. For a dollar? People come to this town, and they're not going to go down there for a dollar. And why does it give me a refund is the other thing. That's a dollar we lost. Well, I mean, if they're going to give a refund, it should come out right away. The way the money goes in, so, the money should come out. So let me answer some questions. One, I, 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 we, I think we all agree with the meters. Um, and this is not a meter's fault, but last time I paid at the meter, it was this month, and somebody told me it was free on a, on a Sunday. So don't believe what you hear, because it wasn't. Um, but the meters, yeah, the meters are a problem. We've had numerous conversations with the company. We're, we're, we're going out to bid, and part of it is we've added, Michael added in there, the idea of new meters, the idea of new meter management, new meter maintenance, the whole thing. So the meters are a problem. Nobody, nobody will disagree with you at all. And the company needs to get here faster, and they need to get here with the parts to fix the meters. So it's, it's probably our number one issue. I mean, the bang's got to grab its page number two. And um, week after week, people come to the mic and say the meters don't work. So I, I don't know okay. why we can't get some sort of time frame. On, on, so I texted you, Michael, right Friday night and said numbers three and six weren't working in the council lot. So you don't give anyone a ticket because you can't punch in three and six if you park in the council, in the, in the municipal lot during off hours, right? So mm -hmm. like week after week, we hear the same complaint. Can we get some sort of time frame on when something's going to be done about it? There's multiple issues with this. One is when I spoke to the company, and I mentioned this about a month ago, the response was, I said, I'm tired of having people come to the council meetings complaining that your meters don't work. And the response was, I don't want to throw Gene Dello under the bus, but it's his fault. And I said, what do you mean? And they said that it was because Gene wasn't performing the maintenance. Well, I've asked Gene, what maintenance do you have to perform? Is there a checklist? And they do do it. The meters themselves are old. I don't think they are the best suited meters for a saltwater environment. Um, currently, right now, we are short batteries because some of the meters are in areas that don't get sun and they're solar powered. 
so that defeats that whole purpose also. Gene has had parts on order for a month, and every time he has spoken to the company and he's shown me this, that the response is the parts are coming. Um, I'm, as the councilman said, when we went back out for this RFP, which will be released to the public probably March 2nd or 3rd, um, it completely changes how the meters are maintained. What we're proposing to do is to actually have a full-time dedicated staff person from the consultant here to manage the meters. And concerning the existing meter maintenance company, when I, he complained to me that they'll get a service call in from the police department that a meter is down. And they'll get here and they'll find that there's more than one thing broken with it. And I asked him, so you're not checking to see what else you're going to need if meter 14 is down? And they said, no, that's not our responsibility, which I said, that's completely poor. Um, I used a few vulgarities in there. Customer service that you're not just going to double check to, to not have yourselves come out here two or three times. So the maintenance on the meters from the company side is incredibly disappointing. The original RFP for a consultant stated that the city was not interested in replacing the meters. We are because they're horrible and they keep breaking. And I tell the story to friends of mine that was, I think, a month or two ago where certain quarters will be accepted and certain quarters won't be accepted. That's just, it's ridiculous and disgusting to have the, these sort of problems. Um, I see what meters are down. I have access to the program now. I, I received it on Friday. I know that the police department is calling them in. It is completely the fault of the company. The police department is on it. It is the company not standing behind their product. And it's a problem. We'll be able to address it with the RFP and the consultant who's going to know more about what meters should work in a salt water environment. And until we get it, it's just going to be us running around like chickens with our head cut off. We see the meters are out on, on the website. We call it in and hope that they have the parts. And you've been here. You've heard me say that the company doesn't keep parts in stock. They actually order their parts. So that lag time of just picking up the phone saying, can you be here with a new keypad? Well, they might have to order the keypad from their Canadian office, which gets shipped for three or four days, where we then get screwed over because it's not here. It's, mm -hmm. it's a whole problem throughout the system. Mm -hmm. But by the way, those meters aren't old. We have the first meters are in the city yard yet, $450,000. They said they were no good. Now we have these meters, and you're saying they're no good. They keep breaking. I, I don't think anyone's going to disagree that these meters weren't specced out at the right way because the oldest or the newest ones, I think, are six or seven years old, and they're not working. I mean, it, you're standing here saying that they're not working. They're not working. They're no good. There's too many problems. I, I know. Who is going to be held accountable for all this money that we're wasting? $450,000 is laying in the city yard right now. We're probably still paying for them. And now we got these meters and you're going to get new ones? Come on, so there's something wrong well, here. Well, the useful life of a meter is about five years. So we've extended the lifespan of what the meter should be. One of the things that we've seen, and I've talked to the council about it, is that there has to be a plan in place to replace some every few years so we don't have this problem of all of them breaking down at once. And that's never happened. So that's something that myself, the police department, have already talked about. The new consultant has to be, be made, aware, made aware of. One of the, the issues that the consultant has, the existing maintenance contract has said, and I agree with this, is that they wanted to install blowers in the meters so that it keeps the components dry. Well, to do that, you need power. There's no power to many of the meters because then you have to do a tap into JCPNL. So the first thing we're doing is we're going to take the map of the meters with the consultant, work with JCPNL, and find out how we can make these things better where the blowers can be then active. Because right now, everything gets wet because of just moisture. So the blowers are actually a big component of it. But here's the problem. Now we're retrofitting old meters. And as you know, when you start retrofitting things, they're not as solid as the first time. So it's chicken and egg. We, we've identified the problems. It's, we just have to move forward to, to fixing them. And that's going to take some time. Mm -hmm. You have to have people that are, you have to hold people accountable. You just can't let everything go. People got to get fired around here. Whoever ordered those. Okay, Rita, huh? your, your time's up. Okay. Thank you. Fired. <laughs> no Hi, Louise Murray, uh, Asbury Park. Um, I just have a question. On June 11th and 12th, you're going to close Ocean Avenue and Kingsley Street for the um, 
for the pink rock. I should put my glasses on. Um, bowling, whatever. How much of Ocean we're not Avenue? We're, we're not closing Ocean or Kingsley. We're closing one half of First Avenue. Oh, I thought, I'm sorry. I no, thought we're not closing Ocean or Kingsley. We're closing where the Stone Pony is. It's between Second and First. So the, yeah. the so northern sorry. part of First Avenue. So not only is my eyesight going, my ears are going. No, down. no, a lot of other people no, were confused. No, I thought, I, I thought. I heard the same thing at a special events meeting. I, I asked the same question, so. No, because I thought that's what I heard this evening, yeah, the yeah. ocean and Kingsley, and I no. wanted to know how long, okay. Um, Reverend Parriott, without a doubt, should be Springwood Avenue Park. My grandmother came here in 1904. The Despositos, the only ones that are still here is my brother and myself. And a lot of memories on that street, a lot. Not, not that I remember 1904, but you know, <laughs> not that far away. But anyway, it, it's phenomenal. It should, there, it, it's a no brainer. I don't know why somebody would even try to incorporate somebody else's name. It just won't fly, okay? Getting back to the meters, hindsight, you sometimes wonder if you shouldn't have had the coin meters, kept them, and you could have hired some of these young people that have no jobs. They could have been there checking the meters, being the meter maid, being a meter man or whatever. That would have taken care of a lot of the unemployed young. But we're not going to put any more holes in the street, I guess. So now we're stuck with the new thing. And now we know that it doesn't fly with our weather conditions because of the sea and the thing. That I Good luck, guys. Sometimes, you, you know, you should have left well enough alone. I drive up Grand Avenue, and I saw those cockamamie houses and those things over there across the street from the old Jersey Central building. I can't believe they put so much there when there was so little there. You're like sardines. In there. It's overdevelopment, guys. You better think about it. Overdevelopment. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Jerry Scarano, Long Branch. Yvonne, um, I like that you guys brought up about the training with the hotel. So we learned if you ask, maybe you'll get something out of the deal. So I'm glad that they had so many people from the city going to it. The other thing about the expansion program, is that on the city website or is that in the local papers? Um, there has to be a way to get it out on Facebook. I mean. You have a media person, maybe they could get it out so everybody knows about it. Seemed like a good idea, but I don't know any real criminals that would go and ask, you know, at the cop station so close by. But that's okay. It was a try. Now with the meters, shouldn't they all have a 1-800 number on them? So let the people call the company directly when they're the problem. I think that would cut a lot of people out of the loop. Let them annoy the, the company. And... Um, there should be a light on them that says, like, check your engine. When something goes wrong, we should know right away on the computer system instead of people calling in to complain about it. That's an idea. Then, um, you know, the towing the car the way during the storm, I was just wondering how many cars does anybody know that were towed and how many um, complaints were left unanswered because then that would give you a ratio how bad the companies that we have hired work for us, or maybe it isn't that bad, but we should have numbers to track that. And um, the other thing I was thinking about, now that um, Asbury Park has gotten to a point where the homes are being restored, I was wondering, like, um, Habitat for Humanity always puts on the internet when they're going to have a demolition sale. I was wondering, is there any way to have houses that are going to be demolished in Asbury Park to be some kind of notice on the city website so if there are homeowners in town that want to salvage from that house so they can restore the house to the original condition instead of just seeing the stuff squashed. It's just an idea. I don't know if any other towns do it. But now we're getting to a point, it really is hard to find original doors or molding and stuff. And if it's going to be junked anyway, it'd be nice if someone could go 
get permission on a Saturday and get the stuff. I just want you to think of that. And then the other thing is, since we're crawling along to get a budget committee, I was just wondering <laughs> what steps are we doing to find out how much we're going to save on taxes this year or how we're going to cut back by the city? Doug? I, oh, yeah, I've, I've cut it. Good timing. <laughs> Well, let me just say, in my personal opinion, I think if we put a 1-800 number on every meter, all, all they're going to do is get more frustrated because it's going to go to some voicemail. Sorry, we're not here. Sorry, we're not here. So it's a start, though. Right. So that, that could be even making it worse. As far as the machines having some type of signal, they, they're not working. That's already there. The problem is they're not responding. So when, when a machine is down, the machine lets us. Well, don't they just get filled with money, paper money, or something like uh, that? What, what, whatever the machine is down for, it does let the city know and let integrated whatever know it's down. Okay. The, the problem is the response time. Uh, as far as the cars being towed, good question. I think in the last meeting, Michael said 46 tickets were given out, but I never got an answer. How many were towed and how many? And I'm going to tell you truthfully, at the OEM meeting, uh, you know, one of the police officers, I give him all the credit in the world, I could never be a police officer because they said, yeah, some guy left the car in the middle of the street on the third day, like, you know, we looked up his license plate, we knocked on the door and he came out and shuffled out. I said, I would have given him two tickets. I mean, instead of zero, I mean, the guy left it there for three days, it was very easy to find out who the owner was, and three days later, he comes out, digs it out, and moves it, and not one ticket was issued. I think mistake on our part, so that's being addressed again. As Amy said, as Michael said, as we've all said at the OEM exit meeting, we had these conversations. Hopefully, we're almost to the end of February. It's going to be over in a couple of months. Right. When, once you get into March, you know, well, the next day is 40 degrees. And so we're over, hopefully, the big storms. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't be prepared for next year. So they're all items we're looking into. Uh, and then the rest of the questions, Michael? No budget committee. Well, we'll see who wins, but that's okay. <laughs> I see many people come and go. That's not a problem. I, I can outweigh you. Uh, in concerning the taxes, as long as the city receives transitional aid, we have to raise taxes. There, it is in the agreement that you have to raise taxes as much as to the budget cap or to the 6% amount. That is in the, the agreement. So until the city starts making more money and can get out of transitional aid, the city will be stuck raising taxes to a bare minimum amount, no matter what. But we get we, we can spend less and don't have to keep up with the Joneses. There is a way to save money. We just don't have to keep spending. Spending less doesn't change the formula that the state uses for the what's called the levy cap. So when, if when, if the levy was a hundred dollars and we spend twelve. <laughs> It doesn't matter that formula still goes on that hundred dollars so no matter what as long as you're at a bare minimum threshold that we are you'll see a tax increase even if we spend less spending less just saves us money in in, in this instance because of what we have to do for transitional aid you're using the same analogy with people on welfare why well, get a job if i get as much money by receiving social funds i mean i don't see the logic behind that i really don't no, we're trying to get off of transitional aid. That's like that's what I would say. The council. So the issue and the way that I didn't get it when John mentioned to it way back, mentioned it to me way back when, is like what Michael's saying is true. It's also moving target, right? We we do so good on our side, and then the state says, "Well, you're you're still not off transitional aid, so we're gonna we're, you have to raise taxes." So and th the focus has to be on getting off transitional aid, so that we have control over our own finances, because right now we don't. Okay, thank you for talking to me about this. I appreciate it. Good evening, Jan Sparrow, Second Avenue. In spite of all the challenges that I think we probably still have in Asbury Park, and I haven't been here since 1904, which I think is pretty astounding, uh, I earned my eighth year downtown at Words Bookstore, and I get we have challenges, but I also want to say that I believe in the last two years or since this new council's been in place, I have seen dramatic changes in this community and what's happening downtown and on the boardwalk. Uh, our sales for the first time ever were up this past year. 
our January is better than at any time. People that come into this community, and this past weekend, I didn't see anybody from Asbury Park. We had a lot of people from out of town who were talking about what an amazing place Asbury Park has become and is becoming. And I think it's in part because we have a group of people sitting up front, other people working on committees, and people in our community who are working really, really hard to move this town forward. And yes, I know, I get it, there are challenges, but I just wish more often some of us could stand up here and talk about the good stuff. I'm downtown in the city hall. They're friendlier, they're more prompt, they're better at their jobs. So I just really feel like I, it's okay. I, I know we have a right to say things aren't great. However, I think it would be really terrific if more of us would spend time thinking about what's working instead of all those things that aren't working. Because as someone who, I own property here, I have a business here, and I can say that over the last eight years, and I'm involved in a lot of organizations, I work a lot with the kids in this community, both on the west side and on this side, and people really are experiencing a change. So I guess I'll just keep standing up here talking about it every other meeting or so to just say, look, it's good stuff going on here, and in spite of all of it, and I know it's going to get better, and I just want to say thank you, and I know a lot of us downtown merchants are really appreciative. Yeah, people complain about parking. I give people dollars all the time to say, take a dollar and have a nice day, because I'm really glad they're here, and the people that are coming here are glad to be here as well. So thank you for all your hard work. I don't think you get enough people saying thank you for your hard work. And uh, keep it up, and we'll all still continue to figure out how to fight the battles that need to be fought to continue to make this the best small city on the East Coast. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I, I, I thank you, and I, I've got to say something. The backbone of any community, especially Asbury Park, are people like yourself. Like I would say, 95% of the people in this audience tonight, the volunteers. The people who come out here say, hey, you did a good job. Hey, you, you screwed this one up. And we do screw things up, and we will not sugarcoat anything. But if we make a mistake, we'll try to correct it. And so the backbone of this community is the residents and the business owners and the people that volunteer, volunteer their time. Thank you. Danny? Hi, Danny Weiss, 1205 4th Avenue. Um, Following up a little bit with what uh, Jan was just talking about and the snowstorm talk, um, briefly, I just want to say I was everywhere between Kennedy Airport and Philadelphia in the days after the snowstorm. And the improvement in what's happening here in this town with snow removal over the eight and a half or nine years that we've been here is just tremendous. So that's one thing um, that I want to follow up with. It's just unbelievably remarkable, especially in comparison with the counties and towns all around us. There was nowhere that was perfect. There were a lot of areas that had much worse uh, snow removal, and ours was um, actually pretty damn good. So one thing I would just like to encourage this council to do um, is to put on their Donald Trump hats and to really strike a better deal, and this time with the state of New Jersey. I see a lot of rateables that are empty lots of land that are owned by the state, whether it's um, the DMV on 2nd Avenue that deals with special um, DMV inspections for special vehicles, which could be tremendous number of homes. It could be tens of thousands of dollars of uh, rateables per year. Um, if we look at the state-owned building on 4th and Memorial, which has been vacant for probably four, four years or five years, and before that had mold and asbestos problems, and which now is surely worse, I see potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars of rateables, um, especially now that the shops on Memorial are uh, established and up and running. And so I really encourage all of you to put on your hats, talk with both sides, Republicans and Democrats. They all want us to get on our feet and yes, get off the transitional aid. I'd like the city to think about identifying other areas besides the few I've just met that are state-owned properties that are either dilapidated or abandoned or being held onto for years for the state to invest on in the future. And I think if um, the uh, good council members here and the city manager really bring this up with our state senators, our assembly people, 
the lieutenant governor and the governor, they just might really um, be happy to get rid of those properties, deed them to the city, have them developed, whether it's for businesses or homes and get those rateables. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I answer that? Um, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, no. okay. It wasn't a question, but I'd, well, love, I can I'd love to get a comment. Um, myself, uh, Mr. Ketty, uh, the director of planning, Michelle Alonzo, the tax assessor, Eric Aguilar, and the tax collector, Tyrone Young, and I met about two weeks ago, I say, a week ago, about looking at all the properties that the city owns and that we hold a tax title lien on to find a way for private entities to take those over. And what was also discussed a little bit after that meeting was that the next step would be to look at the state owned and county owned and see how those can be consolidated. We know that the private sector can work faster than the state. So that was our internal discussions of this is what lots we own, this is lots that someone else owns, can we combine them, can we get a development aspect of it. We met for probably about two, two and a half hours and we know that the state and counties are gonna come next. We can just work faster than the state. Uh, and that that is something we, the council, have been trying to do for two years. I'm glad Michael's like jumping on top of that because there's been people coming to approach this saying, why are you holding on to these tax liens? We'll buy them. And so we're going to look at the good ones, the bad ones, and we're going to force some people to either ante up or else we may go eminent domain. We don't know what we're doing. But we're also dealing with uh, the Braverman building, the old Fish's Bakery on 4th and Memorial. The rumor on the street is the state's going to sell it. And we're, we're talking with the state saying, please do not sell it to a nonprofit. We need rateables. So we are being proactive on stuff like that, where Michael's talking to people, and we are like going up the chain of command. But uh, that's a big, big building that we just cannot turn over to a nonprofit, and we get we have to get back online. So we are looking at all those, and appreciate any help you can give us. God, thank you, Dan. Motion to close. We'll Second. Ready. Any other matters? Motion to adjourn? We'll move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? All right, guys. All right.